Hey guys, so before we begin the video, I'd just like to say that this is now becoming sort of a normal thing now. More and more remote administration tool developers are now installing and providing features which basically notify the client when they're actually having their software installed. So um, when remote administration tools now usually um, get executed, they'll say, do you really want to in a window, which is great. Um, so I'm happy for that. So, so you know, appreciate it. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about ransomware. And, well, it's been an interesting week for me. I've been analysing a lot of ransomware to do with the Serpico Detox Crypt Group. And they're just bad. They're just, they are, they are just bad, bad developers. Um, so, basically... If you don't know already, Serpico or Detox Crypt basically is a ransomware variant. Um, they created the Pokemon Go ransomware um, and they've still got quite a lot of um, things to do with Pokemon in there. So I think in this one, no, it's not this one. That's really embarrassing. They have the resource of the Pokemon one still. Um, and basically, their most recent one, it's built into three bits. Um, so we've got... The actual encryption, Th this is the initial one here, document, so if I just show this, um, so this is the initial starting point, and then we've got taskmanager.exe and serpico.exe. Um, basically, um, task manager is the crypt, so it will encrypt. And then Serpico is the one that uh, basically says, hey, we've we've done that, we've encrypted stuff, please give us the money. This is basically not really good ransomware. As we can see here, we're using the Ringdale managed algorithm, we're using that, and we're getting the key and the IV, right? So we're not using public key cryptography, but they do reference that quite a lot in their, their work, and I don't really understand why. There's also some, before I begin with that, there's also some cool things um, to do with the ransomware. They do have some sound files, so if I just get one of them up. Okay, so I have literally no idea what, what it's going to say, like what it actually says, but... I think that's a crypto. If you're Croatian or you know someone who's Croatian, that'd be great if they could say something about what this actually says. Moguće je da za uvijek koštetite i izgubite vaše failove. Otkupnina iznosi 50 evra ukoliko se javite odmah. Svaki idući dan otkupnina se povećava za još 50 evra. Požurite. Javite se na mail. Ugodan dan. Haven't got a clue. Haven't got a single clue what that says. Um, so basically, yeah, they set the background as this. Um, it's Croatian from what I know, which isn't that much to be honest. Um... And it's Motox 2016. The interesting thing is every CC they have, CNC, uh, that command and control, um, is using 00 web hosts. So they don't even really buy any infrastructure. They seem to be not really that sophisticated, to be honest. Or maybe they just can't be bothered. But to be honest, um, it's it's not a great idea to use 00 web hosts because your CPU limit can be reached, just saying. So uh, let's see if it's still still going. So here we can see we've got the CPU limit reached. If we just to go on that again, because I didn't actually show that here. So there is a generate folder with index. Put that in. And we get the CPU limit reached uh, URL, which is great. So, you know, that no one else can really get the key or anything and there's exceptions which means it's kind of a bit broken and always has been and why are they using zero zero web hosts still i have no idea so i analyzed the pokemon go ransomware earlier this week but i've been given more samples thank you to malware hunter team and i just want to say that it's it's pretty bad everything about this we've got statically named so here it's it's pretty easy for an antivirus to sort of see that 
um, Serpico, be, they've got the same sort of um, way of encrypting as well. So in the Pokemon Go one, uh, because of BG.jpg, they don't, they actually have JPG in their um, extension list. So they want to not do that. So if you have a file named BG in something, like named something which includes BG, it just, it just won't do it. It won't encrypt it whatsoever. So that's an interesting thing. So they hold the, the, this isn't actually the key though. This is the IV, the initialization vector that they're holding here. The actual key is generated by going to um, their generate slash generate index um, and sending over the initialization vector. So if we go to the start of here and go to the entry point. Or one thing to note as well is that Task Manager, they're using dot for skater professional evaluation, which <laughs> is fantastic. Um, yeah, let's go to the main entry point. Uh, okay, so yeah. So we've got obviously background worker, well, bleh, workers. So the first thing, obviously, we just go through the drives. I've said this in my Pokemon Go article, but yeah. So here we can see we're generating 16 for the initialization vector, and then we're requesting for the key. Um, we're also providing some information. So public key, user, machine. The public key isn't public key because we're using symmetric key cryptography, but let's just act like they know what they're doing um, or they just don't really care. I don't. Um, so I've also got Mac. They implemented that before. Um, no, so after Pokemon Go ransomware, that one didn't have a Mac parameter, uh, but they have kept the same user agent as well, which is interesting. It's statically set, which is pretty useless, to be honest. And because of how Zero Zero Web Host works, they've got this advertising code, and so they have to split it with these to actually get the actual key response correctly. Although a lot of things can go very wrong very quickly with that sort of thing. So um yeah it's not a good idea so this is how we generate a key we get the response and basically we get if you're logging network traffic and you get hit by this ransomware effectively you've got the the iv um in your uh file and in, in the file that it's held at and also the the um the key um is given to you um in the traffic so i don't know if it changes every single time um, and they log it, but if you're logging traffic anyway, you get the response, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll give a little look at um, the traffic in a moment. It's not that good, actually. It's not that interesting. It's simply just got the response. It also checks to our SQL. I'm not really sure why it looks it looks for services with SQL and stop them, but if anyone can can bring that light to me, that'd be great. Um, and it also saves, or uh, sorry, does a screenshot and sends it over in the complete. So this is the complete. We send over the base64 image, um, which is string four, and we send it over and say it's complete, basically, with, with correctly um, encrypted everyone's files. Fantastic. Um, so yeah. That is the basics of it. It's a really bad piece of ransomware. So um, basically, I'm just going to show some traffic that was executed in a sandbox. Um, it's not that hard to see, really. It's just basically the generate one. The, the complete one obviously didn't finish. Um, it didn't send it. So basically, we have got a public key. And we get to see the public key, which isn't the public key. It's the initialization vector. Um, we also get some other interesting things as well. To be honest, um, these all really don't really matter at all. It's really the, the... And this doesn't either, to be honest, because this will be logged down on the actual um, machine. The most interesting part is the response where we get... Um, the, you see why now it, it needed that limiter, that, um, that splitter there, because it's got that code. But anyway, this is the actual key that you need to um, to decrypt your files if you essentially have been uh, hit by this. I don't know if it changes every single time. All of their um, command and control centers always go down when I try and look at that sort of thing. Um, and so I can't test, but I essentially think it's working with an algorithm that essentially you don't need to. Every time you enter the initialization vector to them with the same information, it will give you the same key. So if you can just give the same, I don't think there's any limiting at all. So, well, I, I wouldn't assume. So um, 
Hopefully someone gets some of the code that's available on this web server. It's on 00 web host, so I hope so. But anyway, yeah, uh, that is the end of this. I just wanted to give a brief overview on some ransomware that I recently found. I know it's .NET and everything, but I'm moving away from HF sort of stuff at the moment. And more venturing into other areas as well. Hopefully you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully soon. See you in a bit, guys.